In the summer of 2024, leadership on both the Klamath and Six Rivers National Forests asked a facilitated learning analysis team to explore the 2023 Six Rivers Lightning Complex and Happy Camp Complex for lessons to be shared with the larger wildland fire community. This video is the first installment of a few of the lessons that fire managers, field going leaders, agency administrators, and incident management team members shared with us. This is by no means every lesson, every tension, or every perspective of this complex series of events. But like any journey, it's a place to start. Where are we going? We thought we knew where we were going, but then something changes. Maybe it's a new team transitioning in. Maybe it's a change in the weather, but something happens and the plan changes. And here you are, struggling to make sense of what you're being asked to do and why. If you've experienced this, then you know what a lack of alignment feels like, and you've felt its impact on wildland fire operations. Sometimes alignment works itself out. Sometimes exceptional people get everyone onto the same page. Sometimes things never make sense, and you start counting the days till demo. When it comes to that, it's disheartening. It's hard to lead in those times, and it's even harder to follow. If we can agree that alignment matters, alignment between the AA and the incident management team, between the IMT and the firefighters asked to do the work, and alignment between land managers and the communities we serve, then this video is for you. What if we had a process that could help achieve alignment? Would you give it a try? In August 2023, nearly a thousand lightning strikes ignited fires across the Klamath and Six Rivers National Forests. During the flurry of initial attack, both forests did what we do best. People from all levels and agencies stepped in and made order from the chaos and were able to contain most of the fires. Yet it wasn't without cost. A firefighter was seriously injured, homes were destroyed, and community members were hurt and killed. The remaining uncontained fires transitioned to extended attack, and several were grouped into the Happy Camp Complex on the Klamath and the Six Rivers Lightning Complex. Dozens of fires in two complexes managed by separate incident management teams under the delegated authority of two experienced forest supervisors. Over 10 weeks, the two national forests, as well as multiple incident management teams, implemented a range of tactics to manage the fires according to plans developed during strategy meetings, and in some cases, utilized the relatively new Incident Strategic Alignment Process, or ISAP. These plans were formulated to match the conditions on the ground, environmentally, politically, and socially. But over the course of the instance, the weather changed dramatically allowing for a pause and the possibility of a different approach. The social and political dynamics on each force were very different. On the Six Rivers, tribal involvement in burning on national forest lands that are culturally significant was important. On the Klamath, a smallest footprint possible approach was desired by communities and local government. While both fires were considered full suppression fires, their approaches after the change in weather were different because conditions were different on each forest. To talk about how changes in objectives and strategy affect incident response differently, let's take a road trip. In each lane are our different drivers, agency administrators, incident management teams, and firefighting resources, along with many others. When lives or property are threatened by fire, the agency administrator and the incoming team can reach alignment on the route and the destination relatively easily. To go direct where possible and indirect where necessary, stopping the fire before the town is impacted or lives are lost. Resources are briefed on the plan and it makes sense. It is a route they all know very well. From start to finish, all levels of incident management are aligned and traveling together until they contain the fire and arrive at the same destination. Many communities largely expect this response, as do many local cooperators, such as state and county fire authorities. Back to August 2023. A couple weeks in, something interesting happened. It rained. Moisture from the remnants of Hurricane Hillary spread over the area. With changing conditions came opportunity. An opportunity for what? to do what's expected, or to take the road less traveled. Let's first take our drivers on the Happy Camp Complex. This area is famous among wildland firefighters. Its name is shorthand for difficult, 
long duration grinding incidents. Even in the best of circumstances, large fires on the Klamath take a toll on responders, agency personnel, and community members. Recent fires damaged or destroyed important values, took the lives of community members, and injured firefighters. On the Happy Camp Complex, most have broad agreement regarding the route and the destination for the complex. When it rained and the fire threat was minimized, the opportunity was to go direct and put the fires out, smallest footprint possible, a road well traveled. This wasn't the only option, as some fire managers and tribal partners advocated for a different strategy, but at the end of the day, the decision was made to quickly eliminate the fire threat to the critical values at risk, trusting operational resources to manage risk to the best of their ability. The Six Rivers National Forest is equally notorious for difficult terrain and tough fires, but here, the same opportunity meant something different. Here, some of our drivers saw an opportunity to choose an alternate route to the same destination. Their route focused on utilizing landscape scale burning to bring fire to potential operational delineation or pod boundaries. Others expected, maybe even hoped, that the change in conditions would mean going direct. So the road less traveled felt like a drastic alteration in course from what is a familiar tactic on full suppression fires in many places, including California. Based on the change in weather, low national resource demand, and with the latest decision support tools and input from local tribal partners, most drivers on the Six Rivers Lightning Complex saw this route as a way to reduce firefighter hazard exposure and improve probability of success while protecting critical values at risk through wise application of fire rather than excluding it. The same opportunity, the same destination, but a different route. As with any exploration of the unknown, some felt completely lost, not trusting the new direction and very uncertain about the destination. By choosing landscape scale burning rather than to put the fires to bed through direct attack, some resources as well as cooperators and community members felt the six rivers had deviated from the norm and was driving into uncertainty no lane markers or signs and the destination and unknown distance ahead this is the challenge agency administrators are faced with weighing the competing needs values and priorities of multiple partners local governments communities tribes stakeholders and our own internal agency groups both in the here and now as well as into the future and then make a decision. Both the Klamath and Six Rivers approaches achieve their desired objectives, but they got there in different ways. In an ideal world, everyone who has a duty to manage fires on public lands and everyone impacted by those fires would agree about the destination and how to get there. In reality, disagreements occur at every level. Some are minor. Is this lane faster than the other? But some are major. Stay on the freeway or take the road less traveled. Social and political context relationships and past fires all substantially shape the environment in which we make fire management decisions, not just the traditional fuels, weather, and topography triangle that we're all familiar with. How we manage these conflicts in the complex human environment is the hard part of our work, as the other's perspective is often seen as carrying greater risk. We strive to manage these differences in perspective with effective listening and sound decision making that weighs risks and values, the time of the year, environmental conditions, social conditions, and more. But the reality is that this process often does not yield just one path or one destination. Both the Klamath and Six Rivers carried out what they considered to be well-informed full suppression strategies in very different ways. And both were right. The definition doesn't state when, where, or how a fire is suppressed. This quote applies to both complexes. But this is where words like full suppression fail us. Imagine if the rules of the road were open to interpretation in every county or state. Here, the dashed yellow line means that you can pass, but just down the road, it means something very different. This kind of chaos is in our recent past, and we decided to do something about it. We created a common language, and this is where ISAP comes in. People often ask, when should we do an ISAP? Think of ISAP as a process you incorporate into your work rather than a thing that you do. During strategy meetings, ISAP unpacks 
four pillars, critical values at risk, strategy and strategic action, risk to responders, and probability of success. When facilitated and communicated well, everyone from the AA, our partners and cooperators, to the firefighter on the ground should be able to say, I know what we're doing, the strategy and strategic actions. I know why we're doing it, the critical values at risk. The actions that we're about to take are likely to be successful, the probability of success, and are worth the risks that we are accepting, the risk to responders. If anyone can't do that from whatever role they play on the incident, then we have work to do. We know there aren't enough hours in the day to be thinking much about the future, but soon enough the future will be here. It's never too soon to talk about the values that matter to us and our partners, as well as the various risks we all face when protecting those values. Who needs to be in the room for these dialogues? What do the tribal, community, and local government perspectives mean to you as you formulate strategies and carry out your work? How do you manage conflicting values? We have many tools available to us to make our lives just a little bit easier when the time comes to answer these types of questions. Several participants suggested building skill in using and applying potential operational delineations, analytical tools like the Risk Management Assistance Dashboard, and practicing the ISAP process using realistic scenario-based learning with partners. Time-invested learning and practicing pays off. If any of these tools are unfamiliar to you, then seek out learning. And all of this is nothing without skilled professional judgment in action preparation, and action. It takes all of us. What could you do to better prepare for your next incident? It's hard to deny that words failed us in this instance. The interagency fire community uses a jumble of terminology, some of which is in current policy, some agency specific, some outdated, and some of which is defined broadly but understood in various narrow ways. What does full suppression mean to you? Smallest footprint possible? Line? All the way around it? Something in between? Does this ambiguity serve us? Some felt burning to the pod lines rather than going direct was the less risky option as well as the best thing for the values. Some disagreed. And that's exactly what ISAP is supposed to explore and by most accounts for those who participated, it helped. But how are you sharing the conversation with the broader group of responders? Is it discussed in briefings? Is it outlined in the IAP? Is it part of our community meetings? Are all pillars understood? And how do you know? When it comes to alignment, if agreement is impossible, then understanding is the next best thing. We each think about and manage risk based on our own personal understanding of risk and our own risk tolerances. The participants of this FLA were no different. On the surface, the decisions might seem simple. Go direct or stay on the road and go big box. Manage the risks you have or the risks you might face tomorrow. Put it out while you can, or light more and hope you can hold it if conditions change. But each option, advocated for and opposed in this instance in equal measure, presents a complex mix of factors and considerations weighed in different ways. When you are making decisions that only affect you, then that's not much of a problem. But that's not the case here, and it's not going to be the case on your next fire. When you need to weigh risks together, Participants found that anchoring to and building a common understanding of critical values at risk and risk to responders, two of the four ISAT pillars, was useful. How do you know if your perception of risk is different from the person next to you? What do you do about it when you realize that not everyone is on the same page? You guessed it. You ask, you listen, and you engage. Perfect alignment up and down a response will likely always be elusive, but understanding and acceptance are usually achievable. In this instance, we see success, alignment achieved, as well as the opportunity to learn and improve as some never got there. How can both sides of the gap work to close it and reach an understanding? Is the decision space and authority at different levels clear and understood? Though we use analytics, ground truthing, experience, intuition, and all the tools that we can, we can never know what might have been. This video is not meant to question which decision was better, but to get you to think about your next decision. Fire management decisions are complex and made with imperfect and incomplete knowledge. ISAP provides a structured decision-making framework and prompts meaningful dialogue to critically examine and gain alignment on the what, the how, and the if in order to balance risk to people, to values, and to ecosystems. This is what ISAP was designed to do. 
So I'll ask again, if getting everyone in alignment is important to you, will you give it a try?